so you've got an idea of what happens if you've got a long conductor in a magnetic field that it experiences a force. But what happens if you've got just a single isolated charge in a magnetic field? Does it experience a force? You would think it would because if you've got a conductor which has got moving charges going through it, and that experiences this force that you observed last week, surely if you've just got a single charge like an electron, an alpha particle, and you put that in a magnetic field, it should experience a charge. So just going to do a bit of theory first, and then we'll actually see what happens when we put some electrons into a strong magnetic field. We'll put the magnetic field on by the, these coils here, these Helmholtz coils, and we'll see what happens when the electron hits that magnetic field. But first of all, the theory. Let's have a think about what, really looking at what the force is just on an isolated charge moving in a magnetic field. So if you've got, we're going to take a negative charge mainly because most of the charges that we use are just electrons fired from an electron gun. We will be able to use the same ideas for a positive charge, but if we just say that we've got an electron traveling with a speed V through a magnetic field, a field in te of magnetic field B there, so many Tesla, what's going to be the force that's acting on that. Can we get an equation for the force? If we think of the charge as being a total charge, Q, going through a conductor, where well that's the field B that the conductor is moving through. So this is wires. So you've got lots of electrons all moving through there. We're going to, at this point, take a sort of simplified view of what an electric current is. We're going to assume that an electric current is just this conveyor belt of electrons all streaming through in a straight line and you get a total charge because you've got the total number of electrons. In reality, inside a wire, you've got electrons that are bouncing backwards and forwards in a fairly random motion, but in fact, the majority of the electrons are moving in a particular direction with what's called a drift velocity we're just going to assume that the electrons are moving. So we've got a slightly simplified version here, but um, that's what we're assuming here. The equation for that you should know that if you've got electrons going in that direction, field in that direction, the force will be downwards in that direction by the left hand finger and thumb and palm rule. What would the equation be? if you've got a current I and a length of wire L. Did this last week once. Okay, so assuming that they're all perpendicular, you've got I, L, B. There would be a sine theta term on there, but we'll leave that. We're assuming that it's perpendicular. Um, what we're wanting to find is can we get the force here in terms of the charge that you've got just a single isolated charge, so I'm, small, I'm using small q, the speed of the charge and the field B there. Can we get that from this? Um, that makes me think, well, we've got a, the charge, big Q that's running through here, the total charge that runs that distance L with that current I. There's something which I can start to relate these with. Because I'm after V here, aren't I? I'm after the speed of the electron as it runs through. Okay, we've got a distance here. If we're after the speed, can we, get, can we use the time that the electrons take to go that length of conductor? Could you get the time? QIT. So we can get the time that it takes the electrons to go that distance. If we know what the total charge is, so using Q equals IT. So if we say that over a particular period of time, the total charge Q is equal to the current that is flowing through that conductor times the time. There. Can we get an equation for the speed of the electrons V? speed is going to be L over T. Well, that's the length of the conductor divided by the 
time. So we can replace L by V times T here. So just by distance, speed, time. So we've got the force is equal to current times V times T times V. And F is equal to I times T times V times B. So it starts IT, what's that going to be? It is the charge. Okay, so you've got F is equal to the total charge times V times B. And if that works for the total charge with the total number of electrons, what would the force on just one electron would just be the charge on one electron times the velocity times the magnetic field that you've got. So that's really what we've got here. That the force on a single charge is equal to Q, the charge times its speed times the magnetic field that you've got. If they're at right angles. If they're not, if the charge is moving in at a different angle, you would just have to take the component. So you'd end up with F equals Q VB sine theta. But you don't need to know that equation at advanced high. You just need to be able to argue that you would take components, which we'll come back to as an example. Your units, of course, are just going to be newtons. That would have to be in coulombs, by the way. That would be in meters per second, and field would be in tesla. Um, beyond that, it's easy enough. The direction of the force is just as we've talked about before. If you've got the motion of a negative particle, the field going in like that, your push would be the force, which would be down the way for the force. Yeah. 